There's this new game coming out that's been on the Coming Soon tab of the Nintendo eShop for a couple of months now, and I've glanced by it about a hundred times. I never really paid it much thought, that is, until I found out that it was being developed by Square Enix and directed by Yuji Naka, one of my personal childhood heroes who directed the Sonic Adventure games. At that point, I knew I had to know more, so I headed to the eShop and I actually checked it out, and lo and behold, there's a playable demo. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because rather than talking about a game that I've played, many times usually, I'm going to be talking about a demo of a game that hasn't even come out yet. That said, I have a lot to talk about. Buckle up. So without further ado, let's take a look at this exciting upcoming game, Balan Wonderland. Uh, I'm sorry, what? W Wonder World? Balan Wonder World. No, that's, that doesn't sound right. That can't possibly be right. You're sure they called it Wonderworld? Balan Wonderworld, not Wonderland. Why would they? But Wonderland just rolls off the tongue so easily. Everyone knows what a Wonderland is. What is a Wonderworld? Who's ever said the phrase Wonderworld? Well, it is made by Square Enix, the guys who are developing Project Triangle Strategy. So, yeah. Yeah, that checks out. So without further ado, let's take a first look at this exciting, upcoming, frustratingly named game, Balan <sighs> Wonderworld. Holy crap was I unprepared for Balan Wonderworld. Seriously, throw your expectations out the window right now, because whatever you think this game is, <laughs> you have no idea. The game starts out normally enough. You decide from one of eight different pre-made characters, and ladies and gentlemen, it's breakdancing time! You dance for a little bit, and everybody's just having the best time, but then you remember, oh yeah, you're sad about stuff, and go off to be upset by yourself. That's when you see a magic little puffball and start chasing it down the street, because apparently you just forgot you were sad about that stuff you were sad about. You end up at this rundown performance center and meet Balan, who tells you the reason you're sad is you're missing a piece of your heart. Balan, buddy, look, I get it, you're trying to help me, but if I'm really missing a piece of my heart, I gotta go to the doctor, that's a lot more serious than just feeling a little depressed, you know what I mean? Before you know it, he sends you to a magical new world, and just like that, the adventure begins. Now right off the bat, you're gonna notice that the movement speed in this game is slow, really slow. Like the devs turn the knob that controls running speed down to half, just as a joke. And then Bobby, the intern, you know Bobby, great guy, kinda clumsy, came in and accidentally ripped the knob off and everyone was just kinda like, okay, I guess this is the speed of our main character now. This slow character speed is without a doubt my biggest complaint with the game, as it makes the platforming sections really tough to get a feel for. Sometimes you'll go to make a jump and you won't be able to reach a certain area and you'll think, okay, I guess I just need a specific power-up for this that I don't have yet. Only to run around half the map, not finding anything to help you get across, before you realize you just needed to press the button slightly later to change how far you could jump. Eventually you'll get a feel for how the game controls, but the awkwardness of just how limited your character's movements are never really totally goes away. Now I mentioned a moment ago that there are power-ups in this game. Oh boy, are there power-ups. As you explore, you'll discover crystals with locks on them and keys, usually nearby. Using those keys on the crystals will give you a new power-up in the form of a costume your character can wear. That's right everyone, your character gains new abilities by wearing different costumes, which also happens to be how I gain all of my abilities too. Some of these costumes are truly terrifying, ranging from relatively simple outfits that would be standard fare at a local furry convention, to the downright horrific, such as this flower one that stretches the poor boy's body in ways I don't even want to think about. Much like an old school Sonic game, the entire thing can be controlled with a control stick and a single button, which by default allows your character to jump. You're pretty defenseless without a costume, and won't actually be able to hurt enemies, but once you equip an outfit, you'll find your jump button has been replaced with a new ability. Many of these are some form of upgraded jump, a hurricane attack, the aforementioned stretchy move straight out of Mario Odyssey, even a homing attack reminiscent of Sonic himself. Some costumes, like the dragon, completely remove your ability to jump, but give you a fireball attack for damaging enemies from far away. Not too far though, because the fireballs disappear way faster than you'd expect. Now you can have a maximum of three costumes in your inventory at any time, and you can switch between them by pressing the L and R buttons. Every time you get hit, you'll lose a costume, and when you get hit without wearing a costume, well, it's pretty much like Mario getting hit without a super mushroom. You're dead, son. 
Once you lose a costume, it's gone until you find another one in a locked crystal, but you can stock up on multiples of the same costume, either in your inventory or in the storage system you can access at checkpoints. The game will force you to store the costume to the far right of your inventory when you pick up a fourth one, so strategizing over which costumes you should keep in a given area is actually a really important thing to do. There are also certain puzzles and challenges you may find yourself unable to complete with the costumes provided in a specific chapter. That means you'll be traveling from chapter to chapter to locate the right tool for each situation if you hope to find all the collectibles and advance through the story. Now up until now I've pretty much refrained from talking about how much of an absolute drug trip of a game this thing is, but now that you understand how it plays, <laughs> let's get into it. See, much like the classic N64 games of my youth, Balan Wonderworld gives you zero feedback on what you're supposed to do or what's going on. You'll simply be tossed into worlds, running around and dressing up in whatever outfits you can find. As soon as you step through the storybook gate to chapter one, you know this is going to be one of those games. You see a giant farmer and dancing animals who all seem oblivious to the fact you're there, and who disappear as soon as you get close. The world itself will shift and change in weird ways too, rising and falling, and even unrolling at times as you approach, always giving you solid ground to stand on. All of this is absolutely bizarre and completely jarring when you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. It reminds me a lot of being a kid and playing the weirdest games from my childhood. Mischief Makers, Iggy's Wrecking Balls, Billy Hatcher. It's right up there with the kind of games I would have rented as a kid over a blockbuster video and just binged all weekend long having no idea what I was doing or why I was doing it. As best I can figure, you're going into the hearts of other people who have overcome challenges in their lives. Much like you, a piece of their heart seems to be missing. As you approach the boss, you'll see a cutscene of the character whose heart you're inhabiting going through a traumatic moment. In chapter one, it's that farmer we kept seeing as a tornado rips through his farm and kills all of his crops. Now that tornado morphs into this wolf monster who's the boss of that chapter. If everything I've said seems a little out there, like I'm describing a weird dream that I had the other day, that's because there's really no narrative to speak of in this game. You're kind of just experiencing everything and piecing the pieces together, and this is the best explanation I can come up with. Now maybe you're thinking, seeing this poor farmer's livelihood destroyed by an evil tornado wolf would be the most traumatic thing you'd have to watch in this video. You're wrong. You're so, so wrong. This is the moment that broke me. This is the moment that, as I was playing, I curled up in a ball and just started bawling with laughter. After you finish the boss battle, you have a freaking dance party with the farmer. When you arrive back at the hub world, you'll be able to use all those gems you've been picking up to feed those little birds, who are basically like Sonic Adventure Chows. The more you feed them, the more you'll seemingly be able to build a playground-like tower for them to use, which is something of a side quest to keep you sane between all the madness you're sure to witness in the other chapters. And you'll actually get to play at least a little bit of a couple of other chapters in this free demo. The first level of chapters 4 and 6 both opened up to me after I beat chapter 1. So what do I think of the absolute insanity, the sheer chaos that is Balan Wonderworld? Guys, I love it. Okay, I have a lot of caveats here. Like I mentioned, the game is messy. I'm not a fan of how it controls, and I think some mechanics like the hub world stuff could use some in-game explanations. Seriously, what do the different colored gems do? I mean, they change the colors of the birds, but why does that matter? And what's with this statue, and why does it glow? Oh, I unlocked a second trampoline for my birds? That's fun. How do I use it? Do I throw the birds on it? Nope, guess not. But beyond the stuff that's bad weird, there's a lot of good weird to be had. The way the world changes as you get close to it, almost like it's building itself for you to explore. The bizarre dancing animals that fade out of existence as you get close. The ridiculous costumes, the sheer number of them, and discovering what they all do. Like I said, it feels like the kind of game I would have discovered in the back of a video game rental store in the 2000s. That kind of game that got one ad in Nintendo Power that stuck out in your brain for how weird it looked. It's the kind of game that some 10 year old kid who's playing it for the first time right now is going to bring up in 15 years when he's playing Fortnite with his friends on a Saturday at 2 in the morning. Oh god, I really hope we're not still playing Fortnite in 15 years. But really, it's the kind of game that's going to get mentioned now and then in casual conversation, like Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, and remembered fondly not for how amazing of a game it was that changed the shape of gaming forever, but for how weird and original it was. How different it was. And that's a game I can say, 
I enjoyed playing. Whoa, look out, I've got my dragon costume on. Not dragon like the mythical beast, dragon as in I'm going to be dragging this video out another minute while I ask you to like and comment and subscribe to my channel. So yeah, please go do all that, but also seriously, go turn on your Switch and download the Balan Wonderworld demo. It's completely free and it's honestly pretty cool. And no, I'm not being paid to say that. This is not a sponsored video. You think anybody would sponsor this? Really? Really? But this game, it is unlike anything I've played before. It is entirely original and entirely unique, and that's something I really respect. So go try it out. You might absolutely hate it. It might not be your thing at all, and I would not blame you for that. It's got a lot of problems, but just maybe it could be your thing.